liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Evening, everyone. Welcome to our monthly meeting. Uh, start off roll call. Mr. Murphy? Here. Mr. Early? Here. Mayor Mirandi? Here. Mr. Bowman? Present. Mr. Fatty? Present. Okay, we'll start off with the uh, monthly reports. Uh, recreation, hot off the press. Uh, old business, uh, Jeff Phillips, who's not here, the chair for the uh, Rec Commission. Uh, old business docking fees uh, were discussed. Uh, we need to uh, set up guidelines and approve fee in, uh, increases for tourist type boats. Feelings are that they put a burden on the uh, Village of Cold Springs infrastructure and higher fees would help offset tabled but agreed. Fjord Trail, no plans and or communications yet, but with upcoming season we'd like to have a handle on it and not at this, not at, and not at, at the last minute. And not at the last minute, okay, agreed. Strange minutes from Jeff, a little different. <laughs> <laughs> Third is uh, an idea of using the water discharged by the sewer plant for irrigation for Mayor F Mayor's Field. That was brought up by Jeff, has been talked about by him to the wastewater department and village engineer Bart Clark. Future engineering of plans will be brought back in February once New York State DEC and or EPA are contacted if need be. Uh, four, it is a shame that we have lost Joe Russo. We haven't lost him. He's still with us, but somewhere else. Um, need to, um, but we need to pursue the next step. Um, he was asking, will the village be hiring a replacement. Can we uh, hire temp help or a contractor to get back on track? Leaves and cleanup took the back seat this fall, which will be a harder cleanup in the spring. Uh, everyone agreed on that. New business, um, ask to have budget increase of 5,000 for improvements uh, for the pavilion roof. Uh, new application for a member to commission, have asked them to come, to come in next meeting to address what the commission does. Medalist Sports, a major bike event, have asked twice now, and they give us a full detailed uh, plan, um, none as yet. Oktoberfest um, was approved, but they have asked for permission to inflate two hot air balloons on the field. No ride, just for additional color and attraction. Approved, but would like Village of Cold Spring Board's recommendation. Do we need to take an action on that? He's, he's, uh, Jeff is asking for a recommendation, I'm assuming, from the Board of Trustees? Um, I guess that's what it is, yes. Okay. Are these hot air balloons that people ride in, or are they just like the advertising? I think they are ones that you ride in, but they're not offering rides. They're just for color. What a shame. <laughs> What's that? What a shame. Oh, I know. I agree. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> I make a motion, then, that we approve. I second it. <coughs> Uh, any discussion, Wilbur? Uh, just that they look into, you know, whatever tether they're going to use and all that, because you're near the train tracks, that they uh, just take into account all the safety concerns of it. <coughs> and insurance, you would add to that, right, Michael? Yeah, exactly. yeah. So would you like to make a different resolution then? Well, or um, I make a motion that we approve this contingent upon uh, the uh, insurance, insurance. insurance being obtained and that the tethering of the balloons, and I don't know who would approve that, that, that it, they be safely and firmly tethered. I will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> One other thing on that, since our town board representative is here, do you know what the fjord plan, fjord trails plans are? Well, I know there's, they said early spring, it's, you want to start here on Fair Street, get these sidewalks started, that's okay. number one. And supposedly also they got the, the state, we're getting some grants from the state to, to do that parking lot sometime this springtime too, down there. Trust from Stony Park. That's the only thing I'm, that I'm aware of as of right now. Thanks. So they cut the trees down across from Stony Point without having the money to do the parking lot. Well, I guess they knew they were getting the funds, but yeah. now, from what I understand, they're secure now, so now they can move forward with the parking lot. 
So don't forget that. This is the state. So if we could take, you know, that long before we see some action. Yeah. Last it did have something to do with the bats, too, didn't it? That they had yeah, to they take had to them down the last year for the bat habitat? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> They had to destroy their habitat before they could yes, use it. Well, they, right, they had, <laughs> the state requirement is trees can only be cut down. Uh, this is for two species of bat. There's the northern long ear bat, and I can't remember the other bat. They have to be cut down between November 1st and March 31st. Um, the I think it was the medium eared bat, and then the <laughs> slightly <laughs> smaller <laughs> eyed bat. A little eared bat. Uh, I don't think we finished. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Okay, uh, planning uh, submitted from Chair Matt Francisco. Old business, 69 Main Street application for proposed change of use and interior alterations was conditionally approved at our January 28th meeting. A request for a parking waiver will follow to the Village Board. Uh, 20 Boulevard, also known as Campbell property, for a two-lot subdivision. The building inspector has accepted the applications, applicants, sorry, applicants' lot line adjustment drawings with the condition that they send existing surveys showing the rate of ways in place. Those surveys were received electronically on February 3rd. The applicant is expected to now withdraw their application for subdivision and proceed with this lot line adjustment. Um, in new business, 178 Main Street has obtained the required owner sign-off and has now ap applied for a reconstruction and potential change of the use. Respectfully, Matt Francisco. Town of Phillipstown. Well, the only thing I've had, uh, we've been talking about the med drop box for the last few months. It's now officially in service. Uh, the box is securely mounted and the camera is installed, so it's 100% ready to go. So if anyone's interested in dropping off medications they don't want to have in their house, please stop by the town hall and drop them off. Thank you. Any, any hours the town hall is open? Town hall is open from 8.30 to 4 o'clock every day. Well, Monday through Friday, that is. And the, uh, that letter that Gina was circulating, is that going in the papers, or do you know? I don't know if that's going to be in the paper or not. So right. Maybe someone will put it in. not sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, historic District Review. Oh, ZBA uh, has none. I did skip that. Um, ZBA has nothing, um, and I guess they're caught up with all applications and are waiting for new ones. So that's good. Thank you, Greg. Um, historic District Review um, submitted by Kathleen Foley. Uh, ordinance Standards Update on Monday. February 8th, we finally received the next draft of Chapter 64 from consulting attorney William Hurst. Thank you, Mayor Mirandi, for your assistance in this matter. It has been dis distributed among members and will be discussed in workshop sessions. Once the board determines it is ready for trustee review, we will forward it to you. The next round of SHPO CLG grant process was announced a month behind schedule and a revised deadline of February 29th, 2016 given. We are drafting an application for trustee approval and await an updated estimate for the design standards project. Board business, the new board member have reviewed our revised application and made comments. Final revisions are in process. We need to coordinate with Trustee Murphy regarding website questions. We are working on our budget request, which will include, include projections for offsetting costs with application fees. We have discussed with the treasurer a budget set aside for the CLG design standards update as it is an expense and reimbursement grant. Ongoing reviews, a new construction at 230 Main continues in workshop and is nearly ready for public hearing. Other applications this month include signage, siding, modifications, and a solar panel installation. Respectfully submitted, Kathleen Foley, Vice Chair. Thank you, Kathleen. Putnam County. I think they're, they're probably too busy to call us this week. Um, Cold Spring Boat Club. I think the, uh, no news from them. We don't have anything from them. The, the two weeks. Excuse me? The, the two week report just came in the today. The DEC. The DEC. Oh, the DEC one, yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, this is uh, actually boat, well, pro village property, um, the boat club for the DEC uh, remediation. 
This is submitted by, the, uh, by Peter Fairbanks. Um, activities an anticipated for the next two weeks um, are as follows. Completion of temporary containment structure installation. Site monitoring active activities continue. Community air, vibration, noise, documentation air, on-site personnel, and residential settlement and crack. Construction water management continues. Vapor management system operation 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Excavation of soil from inside temporary containment structure. Load out of soil from inside TCS for off-site disposal and holiday schedule. No work for Friday, February 12th, working on February 15th. I believe they have their, uh, their uh, air monitor, the, uh, what are they called? The air, <laughs> the filters, yeah. <laughs> Those, they're uh, a, a number of large <clears throat> motors and um, they're up and running and I guess the noise isn't incredibly bad. Jeff? What is it? It's terrible? It's bearable. <laughs> it's bearable, it's bearable. <laughs> which is, is good. And so I was glad to hear that. Um, so we have the fire company. Uh, short letter from Steve Smith, chief of the fire company. Trustee Bowman, the Cold Spring Fire Company, responded to eight calls for the month of January, and there were three activated fire alarms, a flooding condition, mutual aid for a brush fire, smell of gas, chimney fire, and a CO alarm. Uh, I'd also like to bring to the Village Board's attention that a few months ago there was a filming request to take place on the old Dockside property. I know this site is owned by New York State and according to the film company they were directed by the Village Board to get approval from the Fire Department for permission. We at the Fire Department were okay with the campfire to take place but the film company ran into some paperwork problems due to the fact that they were never directed to file a permit in your building department when they had asked the Village Board for permission to do the filming. There are laws that we have to follow that are in the New York State Fire Code, so in the future we ask that any, any filming request that takes place on state land or within the Cold Spring Village limits go through the building department first, then they will contact the fire department if we need to have any say in the situation. Thank you to Bill and Jeff and the building department for getting all that figured out and getting the film crew proper paperwork for the state parks. Thank you, Steve Smith, Chief Cold Spring Fire Company. So. Anytime there's filming in the future, I guess refer to Bill first. Okay, hopefully, Bill, we should forward that to Bill if we can. This, or does Bill have that? Um, if he doesn't know, then he will know, and we'll take note of that. Um, let's see, Parking Committee, we do not have a, a report from them. Their next meeting is, oh, you do? Oh. We do have a report. No, just the next meeting's the 15th. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I could also say I've been working with uh, Karen Doyle so on the resolution for the metering. The metering, okay. Thank you. Tree advisory, um, December report to the village of uh, trustees, uh, respectfully, is Jennifer Zwarek. In January, the tree advisory board held a special meeting on January 6th to review in public meeting the tree cutting application of Melissa Castro Santos, 54 Parish Tree, to remove, to remove a small Kwanzaa cherry tree, cherry tree adjacent to her property in order to allow rebuilding of her home after the fire. The chair presented the TAB's positive recommendation on the application to the VBOT on January 12th and it met your approval. We have notified the applicant of the approval and re required next steps. Jerry Allen of Phillips Town Tree Service has generously agreed to remove the tree at no cost to the applicant, giving the family's dire circumstances. The TAB did not hold our regular meeting on January 27th due to unforeseen TAB member scheduling conflicts. The TAB has received quote for a removal of two main street trees that are required to be taken down in order to ensure proper grading and safety on main street repaving project. My letter to the village board of trustees containing the quotes uh, should be an item on tonight's agenda. Yes, it is. Code update committee. The project benefits metrics report, which is known as the PBMR 
uh, which is part of the PEP, which is the Project Execution Plan, was updated again and resubmitted to NYSERDA for approval on January 29th. Our NYSERDA coordinator was unavailable for much of the month of March, so there was no NYSERDA conference call in, in January. The second NYSERDA quarterly progress report and minutes for the fourth quarter of 2015 were submitted to NYSERDA on January 1st. The CUC held two meetings in January. During the month, the CUC reached consensus on the topics of evaluate waterfront recreation standards and accessory building standards. As previously reported, the CUC had completed work on the topics of restricting Main Street shopfront buildings to commercial uses and livable floor area standards. The topic detached garage standards should be completed in February. The topics permitted use standards Parking and parking standards are scheduled for February. The remaining topics, which include home occupation standards, accessory apartment standards, and evaluate overnight accommodation standards, which are required for the first public meeting, are also being addressed. The CUC hopes to conduct the public meeting by the end of the month of March. Subsequent to this report and in the month of February, um, I was contacted by NYSERDA. They requested, re they requested permission to put our PMBR on the NYSERDA state website, which is, they thought it was a wonderful, wonderful plan. So we obviously agreed, and now the Cold Spring, the Village of Cold Springs, PBMR is featured on the NYSERDA website. Congratulations. Good work. Thank you. The committee did a nice yes. job. Okay, we have a uh, financial report. Um, Ellen is not listening. The uh, flu is taking her down. Um, so hopefully get well uh, to Ellen. We see her soon. Um, resolution number 062016, um, adding the cost of water meters and meter installation. Uh, we don't, well, we don't really have it's, this. It seems as if we could... Uh, just skip reading the resolution. I would like to do that, and uh, which is for three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars, right? Which covers the cost of the meters and installation of the meters, and this is to add that amount to the ban. So that that's the topic. Okay. So uh, do I have a motion to? So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. Anything you'd like to add? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is this a roll call? Oh, I don't think it is. Okay. One of the last one is, or the next one is. The next one is? Okay. Just that if anybody has any questions about the water meters, that we went into a pretty detailed discussion in the last two meetings. So. Yeah, if anyone needs any information on these resolutions, um, they're fairly lengthy. Um, you can pick them up uh, whenever you'd like. When the, when the office is open, just ask Mary, and she'll be glad to give you a copy. So just for uh, time's sake, I'm not going to read uh, seven or eight pages of legalese. Um, the second is... Um, is more confusing. Um, you, you were discussing this with right. This the second resolution is to increase the appropriation uh, in the ban for by the amount of four hundred and thirteen thousand um, dollars for uh, improvements for increased costs in the improvements to the existing treatment plant and replacement of the pumping station on Market Street. And we all have the fair street. Collection system. It's all tied into the same Sorry, and the Fair Street electrical panel, correct? Is it more than just that? Uh, for that resolution, it has to do with uh, Fair Street uh, collection system, um, re the the areas that are uh, Collapse. collapsing or in Locating imminent collect. collapse, right. and some spots uh, below the tracks on. Uh, north and Market Streets. So it's sewer collection system rehabilitation as well as the uh, pump station replacement. It's adding the band. In other words, when we buy the new band, it's adding those costs into the amount that was taken out for the wastewater treatment plant renovations that are completing as we speak. So, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. 
<coughs> Discussion? So the total amount on the new ban is going to be 2028000 mm -hmm. And that's, we're also going for EFC funding on that, so it's possible that it won't all, it just for the ban, but when it's time to do long-term financing, if EFC comes through for us, then uh, that's going to switch it around a little bit for the moment. That's where we're going. And that's the wastewater ban? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Regarding the bonds, and uh, there's definitely a concern when you're looking at these and these numbers that uh, where we're going and where we're at. And so Marie had called Bob, Bond, no, Bond Council, so uh, and um, had a conversation with him, discussed the water and wastewater ban, and what we're proposing to do with these two resolutions to the water ban and the wastewater ban, um, and what that new, those new totals would be. I also discussed with him the fact that the bond is set to be completed by January of 2018. And his recommendation was to take out a new bond in 2017 with the first payment due after the completion of the current bond in 2018 and to move money from the bands. And whether it's a single bond for water and it's another bond for wastewater is to be determined. But to move the money out of the band into the bond and at the same time, look at available EFC financing, which would theoretically have a lower interest rate by up to 50% to what the bond pricing would be if we were to re receive AAA, uh, AAA rating, uh, which would be very advantageous to the village. He felt that with doing that and with our current plan, we are in very reasonable shape. He did not think we were taking undue risk. I asked him if he would be willing to come to the village and talk to us about long-term, uh, long-range capital planning. And I suggested to him that we should look into that after the budget is passed, because we're not going to do anything at this point other, other than the increased ban amounts. And he w w agreed, and he said that he has been here before. He knows, the, he knows what our projects are, what our pressures are. Um, and so we'll set that up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a, a, have a motion to forward unpaid taxes to Putnam County for collection. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, report water, wastewater. All right. If we start with water, uh, we're at 100% capacity. The rain's. Uh, Rather than snow, keep coming in. Um, a little bit of snow, but more rain. Uh, we are actually down 7% from uh, this time last year for January's usage, so that's also good. Uh, and then just under remarks, we were talking about the meters, which we just took care of. And so uh, we're pretty well on, on uh, target with that. The only other thing to add is the uh, we hope to, by the end of this month, uh, have enough information to make a recommendation regarding the dam consultants for the uh, for the planning uh, design phase of the the dam projects. Great. So, uh, for wastewater, the aeration replacement and electrical upgrade at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, contract number two, the electrical is substantially complete. A short punch list has been prepared, and we expect it to be addressed quickly. Contract one has the majority of large tasks completed. The new aeration diffusers are in place served by the new turbo blowers. We have already seen a dramatic drop in the electrical demands for the blowers, which is the largest, uh, was the largest demand down on site with the old 100 horsepower motors that were on the old blowers. And we look to see them reflected in the cost savings in our electric bills as they come in. Um, outside outstanding items are site restoration, a small amount of paving, and some building details. Uh, the contract completion date has been extended to April 15th to allow for the paving plants to open so they can complete those tasks. Uh, and we did have a non-compliance event of our speedies permit with regard to total suspended solids in the facility effluent. Uh, to account for the project when it was under construction, we had to basically take you know, we have 500,000 gallons of aeration tanks. We had to do one at a time by basically moving the load from one end to the other so they could do the work. So shifting things around and, and then having the new blowers and everything online is not at all uncommon. It would, there would be, you know, noncompliance here or there. It's been, been reported. 
uh, but it will take the next few months to recuperate from all the changes that are going on down there. It is a microbiological process, and it doesn't always do exactly what you want when it wants. So, you know, it takes a little bit of uh, maneuvering. But as always, the DEC has been notified, and we are making process changes to adapt to our new facility. And then uh, I am working on a brief uh, like presentation, some photos and whatnot for the project so people have a better understanding of what their money went to pay for. It really is uh, impressive down there what's, what's happening. And again, we're going to see electrical savings pretty quickly, and that's dollars, and we like that. So. That's a nice, a nice, a good thing to do, Greg, yeah. to put that on there. To follow up on your statement about electrical usage, uh, Catherine and I audited the, the electric bills today, mm -hmm. and the uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, electric bill was in the range of under two thousand dollars, and and that and it was online last month. So this is a full month's usage, Excellent. as compared to six thousand in the range of six thousand yeah. dollars in previous months. So yeah. the savings is at least four thousand dollars. It's a amazing. Month. The, the it's blower huge. that's running is is right now serving the whole facility it's running at like 14 kilowatts it's great it's, work. it's really amazing it's uh it was a good move and huge I think savings it, yeah. yes thank you we having a grand opening party <laughs> <laughs> we'll hold off <laughs> so, thanks uh, Greg. oh and just a comment i guess jeff had it earlier in his uh recreation thing he, he had asked a couple of months ago about the potential for using in facility effluent if it would need to get filtered again and potentially use it for irrigation down there which is actually uh it's something that they encourage at the dec level it would require a speedies permit uh review and and potential modification so it's nothing that could happen quickly or easily uh, but we are looking into it because that, that would certainly help out the uh, the grounds down there. Yeah. There's some methods of subsurface irrigation, drip irrigation, so that it's not a broadcast over the top of things with, you know, there's the potential for people to, to be thinking that it's, you know, wastewater effluent and that type of thing. So there's different ways of looking at it, but it is it is encouraged at the state level, so it's something that we'll, we'll look into what it would take to uh, to get that done. Great. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Rick. Thanks, sir. Report of code enforcement. Uh, I'll just give you the briefs or uh, the headings. Uh, permits issued 10, alarm permits 0, building complaint inspection 17. Uh, let's see, page that's stuck here. Certificates of occupancy and compliance issued uh, 18, complaints and violations 6, referrals 2. Fire inspections, two. Fire inspection violations, zero. Noise ordinance waivers, zero. Records search, eight. Uh, new matters before code enforcement, 20. Dumpster pod permit, zero. Foils, two. And meeting appointments, 10. Fees collected January 2016, $2,404. Fiscal year to date, 41146 other matters, 10. Um, submitted, William J C. Bajarski. Okay, uh, police report <coughs> submitted by George Kane, officer in charge. During the month of January 2016, the village of Cold Spring Police responded to 70 calls for service. Officers issued 42 traffic citations to motorists for various vehicle and traffic infractions. In addition, 38 parking violations were issued to vehicles parked on village streets. The police department reminds residents to take advantage of its dark house program. Residents that are pl planning vacation can notify the police that they're Home will be unoccupied during this time. Officers will make routine checks of the location and notify the homeowner of any incidents. In accordance with Village Local Law 126-24, the police department impounded two vehicles in January. Uh, the said vehicles had in excess of $200 in unpaid parking fines owed to the village court. The police encourage everyone to answer parking tickets to avoid having vehicles impounded. Several notable incidents occurred in January 2016 within the village limits. On January 2, police officer Waltz arrested a person for driving without a license and criminal impersonation after the suspect gave a false name. On January 8, uh, police officer Lavelle arrested 
an individual for aggravated unlicensed operations, second for driving with a suspended license. On January 11th, in the public library, a report was made of a male exposing himself after an investigation conducted by police officer Bollinger, uh, officer in charge Kane and Putnam County Sheriff's BCI unit. The suspect was arrested, charged, and sent to Putnam County Jail. On January 20th, police officer Lavelle arrested an individual on an outstanding warrant issued by the village court. <laughs> busy, busy month, I guess. Is it a full moon month, two times a year? Justice Court, um, January 2016 monthly report, uh, submitted by Judge Thomas Costello. Uh, fines forfeited, bails and civil penalties, $5,175. Parking tickets, $1,600. Uh, civil fees, $280. Mandatory state surcharges, $3,819. Uh, total of $10,874. Uh, report of the Mayor and Board of Trustees. Anyone like to start off with a friend? Nothing? Yes, I have a little. Oh, you do? <laughs> okay. It's like really? shaking your head. <laughs> Encouraged. I, I was waiting for you. I thought you had a question. Okay, I have a few things on my list. First of all, um, the appreciation day went very well, and I have a, a report for the members of the board, and everyone can take uh, both the report and what I did was an after action report. Uh, total amount for the village, expenses for the village was $771, which was less than last year, and I thank all of the. Um, the restaurants in town who were very uh, nice in give, you know, getting us their food. We paid for that food, uh, which is typical um, of this particular event. The only uh, restaurant who has not yet and probably will not give a bill, although I've asked them three times, with Jimmy Lai in the Riverview. Um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, so $771, and there's an after action report just so that we have a, we'll have it fresh in our minds for next year. I'd also like to thank uh, Bill Bajorski, who donated some beer along with the donations of liquor and wine from the trustees. <clears throat> okay, second in line, um, a long time ago, it seems like forever ago, um, we ordered new signs for the bathrooms down at Main Street, um, unisex signs, so that those bathrooms would be unisex. Um, we we followed up, followed up, followed up, and today Mary got a notice uh, from the vendor saying that the bathroom signs were ready and he would be installing them for us free of charge. So the bathrooms down at the end of Main Street by the um, by the Chamber of Commerce office will now be unisex, um, you know, for a number of reasons. That's nice. In the off season, we can keep one open and keep one closed, and only have to clean one. And in the on season, we don't have long lines on one side and not on the other. Uh, so hopefully that will work. And I think the only thing pending down there, I believe, is re uh, removing the urinal from the men's room. <clears throat> is it still pending? <laughs> okay. I'll take, I'll take care of that. We'll remind you. Nice work, Fran. There's uh, a bill that was never submitted by John McGuire for work he did on that when it originally clogged. I don't know if he's ever going to submit it, but oh. if it should come, you know why. You know why. We'll thank him if it doesn't come, and we'll pay him if it does. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> tonight, at some hour when he gets here, Anthony will be installing Wi-Fi in the village offices. <clears throat> uh, he's going to do that installation tonight, uh, I guess, after his normal work day. So we're uh, excited about that. That's another thing on the agenda. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a big thing on the agenda is on January 14th, Mary, uh, Sari, and I attended a meeting in someplace. I don't remember where we went. <laughs> but anyway, it was a meeting for the Local Government Records Management Improvement Fund uh, it was a grant information meeting, uh, and basically it was a, a meeting to talk to us about how to apply for grants for New York State Archives and Records Administration where we can get the, all of the records um, um, put into electronic format, uh, scanned or whatever it is. Uh, so we, we spoke, we had the meeting, went to the meeting. Uh, there is money available. The money is mostly available for municipalities that are willing to at least get involved with shared services. <clears throat> there are other municipalities there who are looking for grant money for their own to, to take care of digitizing their own records, uh, and it seems that that might not be as easy to get as shared services money. Um, you know, Mary and I talked about it. Mary has t spoken to Tina in the town hall and to Pauline, Pauline thank you, in Nelsonville. Um, 
to see if we, you know, we wanted to join together on this to get all of our records digitized. It, it's a big, to write the grant is big because you have to sort of analyze how much, um, how much paperwork you have in terms of how many cubic feet or yards or rooms or whatever. You have uh, how long it takes for someone to find something in a, you know, normal course of the day and how long, how much this will save us. Um, so we are going to, uh, both Tina and Pauline are interested in, in joining with us on this, and I believe we'll, both of them will be presenting to their boards. Uh, <clears throat> if we can get it done, we, you know, and start writing, for the, writing up the grant for this, it will be really very helpful. Um, <clears throat> What we're looking at uh, scanning at this point would be records from the building department, the planning, and the HDRB, especially some of those huge long um, diagrams and so on, because we just we don't have room. They're not easy to store. They're not easy to find. So um, we're keeping our fingers crossed that this will go through. I think Mary is meeting with Tina and Pauline and Linda Bull, who is the regional advisor on this, on Thursday morning to <clears throat> to you know go over how the applications will work. The applications, as far as I know, at least of as of January 14th, had not come out yet. So there was no deadline on them yet, um, but they're you know they're processing. It's another another grant that we're going to try to write, uh, or at least request an application for. And keep your fingers crossed. Maybe we'll be able to get our documents all scanned, and then we also have to present to them a plan for how in the future we will continue this. So we'll keep things up up and running. <clears throat> Frank, would it be possible to add to that list the ZBA? And the thinking is that the the request, the building permits, come into the building inspector, and then they they are referred to the planning board, right. the mm -hmm. HDRB, and or the ZBA. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have the the building inspector's files, you're going to have much of the materials that the ZBA mm -hmm. uses. And I think it wouldn't be at a lot of additional records, but it would fit in very nicely would be, if if that could be considered. Yeah, okay. So Mary, when, <clears throat> on Thursday when you talk to them. Moving forward, too, can we talk to these boards and maybe as part of the application process make it mandatory that a, a digital copy of these large plans get submitted with I think, the materials? Uh, I think that's one of the things we're hoping to write into this grant because we have to have, we have to have, be able to present to them the fact that we will continue this, and that's mm -hmm. probably one of the easiest ways that every people who are requesting, you know, from planning or whatever do present digitally. It would make our lives a lot easier. Well, but, but what he said is digitize the large plans. So what well, we I mean, pretty, any what application we get a, packet what, what that we, they're going to put. Well, the, the, what I, I heard as a, a potential problem is you get a site plan, mm -hmm. and those are frequently but they're usually very non-standard. CAD drawing or something like that that's easily converted to a JPEG and could be. Well, a CAD might. Yeah. Um, but what you really need to do when you're looking at it, you need it in the large size. Mm -hmm. um, so no, you, what I'm you saying is, as part of the application process, if they bring a large format print in, that they also are handing a, a file over to the clerks containing that, the digital That's reasonable if they, if they can do both. Mm -hmm. if, if they can do only mm -hmm. one, then I would say you need the hard well, if copy. They're, if they're making the uh, drawing to print it, they should be able to save it. It's on a computer somewhere. <laughs> I, I can't say that I, that's true or not true. Okay, the, the last thing on my uh, list is the boat club. Uh, as we discussed last week, uh, Dave and I had a secret uh, meeting. We had a secret meeting. We did. <clears throat> Shame um, on you. We had a meeting too. with with the boat club, and I followed it this week with an email to all of the members, all the trustees, um, with the notes from that meeting, and the notes from previous meetings that we had had in April uh, with the boat club. Uh, in general, uh, a number of reasons, you know, a meeting of two trustees is not unusual since we can't have more than two at a regular meeting. And you get, you get the basics at a preliminary meeting and then you bring to the board what the, what's, um, what's important about that meeting, what the next steps are. Um, as I said in the, in the email that I forwarded to all the trustees this week, um, we gave you our notes and I also um, quoted, well, I spoke to Bob Freeman about the possibility of us getting together to get our heads around this before we get back and uh, talk to the boat club again. Dave and I have tentatively scheduled a meeting with the boat club for, I believe it's February 24th, it's the last Wednesday. Will that of, be your next secret meeting? It will. But okay. It won't be secret because I just told you. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, um, it's February 24th, it's a Wednesday, the last Wednesday of the month. Um, so what I had asked of the trustees is if we could sort of share um, thoughts and ideas on this by email, and according to Bob Freeman, we could do that, 
and that will be not foilable because uh, we can ask members to present their thoughts and suggestions without having to, um, without having that open to foil. And you know, it's not that we're hiding anything, but it's just easier to negotiate with a with an organization, any organization. But this, in this case, the boat club, if we at least know what we are going to be saying to them. Um, so if we could share our suggestions by email, that'd be great. Once we get our minds around it, we could do one of two things. Um, Dave and I can meet with them on Wednesday and bring what the board suggests. We could, or we could uh, have a workshop with the boat club and um, you know, just uh, invite them to come and do it, do it in an open meeting. But I'd like, if possible, for us to all at least be on the same page or at least know what each other's thinking before we meet with the boat club. So um, depending on when we can get suggestions, uh, either we'll meet with them on Wednesday the 24th or possibly the following Tuesday we can schedule a workshop with the boat club and do it in, in an open meeting. But um, I think a workshop would probably be the best. Uh, I mean, that'd be fine, but we, I, we I'm, just I'm sort of... from members of the boat club, too, that are not happy that they're being left out of meetings as well. So if everybody can come into a room, even if they all can't speak because they okay. don't speak for if the we, boat club yeah. leadership, then... Well, if we can share our thoughts, I'll consolidate what I have. I'll send it back to everybody once you send it off, and we'll, we'll just sort of figure out where we want to go from here. Um, so whatever thoughts you have, if, uh, I'll gather them in emails. Um, and then, Dave, if you want, we can cancel our Wednesday, the 24th meeting, and schedule maybe a workshop for the first Tuesday of March. It's fine. Boy. Okay. So that's all I have. I'm done. <clears throat> Thank you, friend. Thank you. Okay, uh, my report, uh, as you're aware, the uh, packages for the Main Street project were let out for bid. Uh, seven firms picked up the bid packages from Mary. One firm did submit a question uh, to CHA, who is our consultant. The deadline for questions was last Friday, so we will be accepting no additional questions. Uh, and the bid opening is February 22nd at 10 a.m. here. I believe it was 10 firms as of this morning. Pardon me? 10 firms, uh, 10 firms requested. Uh, uh, we packages. got three more? You yeah, got three more, Mary? Uh, I saw 10. A little more interesting. Wonderful, wonderful. So hopefully we have a couple of reasonable bids. Uh, that's, uh, before we... Uh, uh, you, you may remember that at the last meeting I said we've got to start focusing on budgets. And we have uh, one remaining meeting in February, three meetings in March, and then I think two meetings in April before the budget is due. So I would, I would ask everybody to be very thoughtful of any any commitments that are being made for village board time so that we can accommodate uh, discussions about the budget. And I expect that those discussions will be fairly long. And, and we will require, I think, multiple sessions to go through the topic. So I would just caution against overscheduling time on the calendars for the next two months. Well, I think we definitely will have four meetings in March. Okay. Not three. I think we're going to need another meeting just for budget talks. So well, anyway, then, plan on four. Should we consider an, another meeting next week to begin the discussions even earlier? Well, we'd have to talk to Ellen. I mean, we could tentatively set if she has information that we we're hoping she has. Okay. I'm definitely willing to do that. Okay. We tentatively set one for next week, right. and we'll just I'll, t I'll talk to Ellen. Or do we when do when's the time needed? But we can we can proceed without that information, yes. right? We can we can take a look at the the fixed cost items, some of which are big ticket items that we know are going or we suspect may go up. Uh, workman's comp, uh, uh, medical, uh, uh, fireman service award, whatever they are, and and begin to determine how they will what those numbers will be in 2000, 
16, 17 versus what they were in 2015, 16. See whether it's a net add. Okay, so let's schedule them for next week. I'll talk that one. Is Ellen in if she's feeling better tomorrow or no? <laughs> or this week, Thursday? Uh, she has a flu, so could be. Could be. <laughs> could be okay. Tuesday. Keep, <laughs> keep us posted. <laughs> All right. So we'll set two meetings next next month too. I think we'll need we'll put that on the uh, calendar. Trustee Bowman or Fatty? Uh, a few weeks ago, we had talked about or received notification about a change in New York State law that was going to allow volunteer firemen that are also employees of municipalities to answer alarms during the workday. And uh, I just wanted the board's permission to follow that up with our attorney and just put, put together some kind of resolutions that we can uh, consider to make that official. Uh, the chief and the president of the fire company expressed a, an interest in it uh, to hopefully get some of the current employees of the village back in the ranks of the active firemen. Uh, I'm fine with that. <coughs> I'm gonna, I'll send a letter out to uh, John first then and I'll CC everybody on it. Okay. Were you going to put together um, a, a process description for that, Michael? That was in the January meeting. Uh, as far as what by process, I'm not it, sure what you're in the January minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the second meeting in January. You said you would follow up with a, a process description for handling that. And that's uh, kind of what I want from the attorney and from the board is do we want to put a time limit? Because I mean, a fire call doesn't have a, a set time limit on it. So, I mean, if there's a house fire and one of our employees responds to it, we might lose three hours of a, a day where he's there. Um, I, I don't know how the board feels about that. Well, are you going to put something together for the village attorney yeah. to look at? Yeah. Okay. I, As opposed to having I'm, you say, I'm sure with the change it. in the law now, it's probably popping up all over the place. So there might be other templates out there that we can borrow from. Uh, I, my advice is to go to him with something. If, if you have it. Yeah, I'm going to. That'd be great. Yeah. Just continuing to work with uh, Karen Doyle on the parking, and uh, it's later in the agenda for the uh, for the meters and the municipal lot, but um, I've been looking at the code, and uh, I believe we may have an argument that will satisfy people who live on streets without parking in areas that um are in question so maybe we can that's with up. regard to the permit or the residential okay okay i do not have anything uh let's see Fur further to that uh catherine there will be um uh, at the uh at the parking committee meeting monday night there will be a discussion on the all of the options that exist on the parking meter. I believe that Anthony is forwarding the, it's five pages worth of stuff. Um, I saw him today. You saw it? No, I saw him today. Oh, okay. So there are five pages worth of, of questions such, I mean, it's not dense, uh, but one of them is, what is the primary language you want the meter to respond in? What is the second language you want the meter to respond in or not? So these, these questions have to be answered so that they can set up the meter. Um, so those will be discussed at the Great. meeting next Monday. Okay, uh, correspondence, we have none. Old business is uh, authorization uh, for um, authorized expenditure for removal of two trees on Main Street. Um, this is from uh, the tree committee's chair, Jennifer Zwarek. Uh, Please see attached quote for removal of silver maple on northeast corner of Main and High Street, as well as a small Norway maple on southeast corner of Main and Lund Terrace. As you remember, Eddie and the highway magicians have agreed to remove the two trees on Furnace Street. Uh, this quote is very reasonable and within the tree maintenance budget, and I'd suggest accepting it and getting on his schedule as soon as possible so that it can be done this month in accordance with DOT restrictions for removing these trees within the dormant season. Again, 
yes. involving bats. Um, please bats. discuss with mayor and village board of trustees and let me know if I can proceed. I make a motion to approve the estimate for the removal of the two trees. I will second that. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, new business, uh, consider resolution uh, number 08-2016 to set public hearing on regulations for parking in municipal parking lot off Main Street. Do I have a motion to uh, set a public hearing? Second. Discussion? I just have a question on the local law, the wording we have for the draft local law. Um, <clears throat> as we went through, as I looked through it um, in letter C on the front page, I was wondering if we could eliminate the last line there that says as follows, one dollar for each one hour of the time desired. It seems to me we're sort of hemming ourselves in that if we decide in, in two or three years that we want to raise the price, we have to redo a local law. Can we just end it by saying, um, shall deposit the proper payment into the into the multi-space parking meter for the time desired period. That's uh, awesome. Without, and then there was a second, thank, thank you for saying that. On the back of that page where we're um, adding the, uh, the three rows for the table one parking and vehicle fees. I'm sorry, which row are you in? Oh, uh, sorry, and on page two of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's uh, section three amendment of code. The, um, at the bottom of the column entitled table one add these three rows um the problem with this is that the the chart on, in the code reads you know this is the current amount you owe and then this is the amount you owe after 30 days and this is the amount you owe after 60 days where our this discussion said this is your first offense second offense third offense so the difference between a second offense and, and you owe it in 30 days because you're a late payment it late doesn't it doesn't are different than second offense right so it doesn't this these should not be in the chart that's currently in the code. We have to put it someplace else. Because um, she's asking us to just add it to the table one that's in the code. Add, add, um, at the bottom of the column. In context. Basically, it needs to be a new table. Yeah, this is the, this is the table that's currently in the code. And it doesn't so fit. So, so we just need to put this in a different place. So the whole of section three, or uh, would, would um, we just need to instead of saying at the bottom of the column, you know, uh, it says by adding the, by adding the text, text the, the table, table of fines set forth therein, instead yep. of at the bottom of the column entitled, I think it should. Probably read that there needs to be a new by adding the chart of text to the bottom of this one. Yeah, by adding a, a new table or something to that effect, something, whatever it is, because we need different headings on the columns. So, so on that, just so I'm straight on that. Well, um, so by adding a new table, a fine set. Of fines, yes, and then it would be column A would be uh, first offense, column B would be second offense, and column C would be third offense. Okay. Anything else? It's all I found. Right. No problem. So can we uh, set a date for that or before we vote or all in favor and then set the date or? <clears throat> all in favor? Oh. Aye. Um, and we should set the date now, <laughs> which how does that work, or how much notice do we have to give on that, Mary? Or okay, so we could do it next meeting, or is that too soon? Don't have time. Don't have time. Okay. Right. The notice wouldn't appear until Monday. The next meeting is Tuesday. 
So okay. the 23rd would be the earliest. Okay. I'm fine with that. Everyone fine with that? 7 o'clock? Sure. So do you want me to communicate with Karen to take that last line out uh, for the time desired period? Right? That doesn't box us in. Yeah, no, I, I totally yeah. agree with you. Yeah. Um, I leaves us wiggle room. Um, I think there's a roll call vote also. That's on the next resolution. That's the next resolution. <clears throat> The next is a resolution of the Village Board of Trustees, the Village of Cold Springs, setting a time and place for the public hearing on a proposed local law amending the Village Code Chapter 126, regulating vehicles and traffic to address metered parking in the municipal lot on Fair Street. Do I have a motion? A second. Discussion? Uh, yeah, the secret needs to be filled out. If we're going to have a public hearing, we need to have the secret completed. It, uh, the secret was is is here. Right. Somebody needs to go through and fill it out. Okay, so then we can't do this. All right, so we'll have to table this. Uh, if you table this, you table the scheduling of the public hearing. I uh, know. Yeah, well, so I brought this up. In fact, it's, this seems to be. Is this an easy fill out? Yes, it is. It's very straightforward. Can we, we get it filled up and then in time to do the public hearing? Um, well, we have to do this tonight. We have to um, pass the resolution tonight. Okay. <clears throat> so you're suggesting we fill I, this out or it is filled out? Or no, it's, no, it's not filled out. I, I suggest that we say that the answer to question one is yes, and that says you skip all of the questions here, and you go to part two, and that the answer to all of the questions is part two is no or small impact will occur, and then you just I sign it. The short environmental assessment form is completed. Uh, Pardon me? Question one is checked yes, so yes. proceed to mm -hmm. two. Six. Part two isn't checked, nothing in part two. I'm suggesting that all of the questions in part two be answered, no or small impact may occur, and then it be signed. I'm fine with that. Is everyone good with that? Yes. Okay. So, back to the resolution. So then, in part three, um, oh, we have another part. Where are these in well, this package? is the short form. It's, it's, the long form is about eight pages. Um, I would su I would suggest that we would check the second box. The name of the lead agency is the Village of Cold Spring, and Dave, you're the responsible officer. Everyone fine with that? Fine with that. Yes. I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. Done. Thank you, Marie. You're welcome. And is that it for that? That's it for that. Okay. Then vote on the. Any resolution. other discussion? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. One thing: if if the changes to the table mm -hmm. are in anything other than 126-23. That will affect the second resolution, which refers to changes only to 126-14 and 126-23. penalties for parking violations. No, it would be in that section. Penalties for parking violations. Okay. Uh, and I'm just saying, it, if it is anything other than that, okay. then this resolution would be invalid. So, Kathy. Catherine, when you speak to um, Karen Doyle, Karen. Karen Doyle um, the new chart has to be in one section of the code. Otherwise, otherwise we have to change everything. You said it has to be in 23? Yeah, 126-23, yeah. which, which talks about penalties for parking violations. Okay. Uh, so roll call vote. Uh, Mayor Morandi votes aye. Trustee Murphy? Aye. Trustee Bowman? I'm actually, I'm going to abstain just because 
I think we should take more time with the uh, the environmental assessment form. But uh, you can go ahead with the vote. I just want to, to be honest, I went through it myself mm -hmm. um, uh, yesterday. I, just, I, I don't like filling it out at a meeting. Okay, it's, that's fine. It's just, yep. it, some of the questions are questionable about impairing character and quality of existing okay. community. So all this is is installing a parking meter in the existing parking in the existing municipal yeah. lot. It's not it's not macadamy yet. It's mm -hmm. that's all. No, I understand okay. completely and I, okay. I know what the forms for. Okay. Uh, Trustee Fatty? Yes. Trustee Early? Yes. Uh, vote passes four to one or four to four and one abstention. Yep. Thank you. So uh, therefore that it's we will notice the public hearing, Mary, for two weeks from tonight. At seven. At seven. Okay. Um, next, we have approval of bills, batch number three four three zero, from the amount of one hundred ninety nine thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars and seventy five cents. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion? I do have a question. I haven't seen a, a bill from the attorneys in a bit. They How often do they submit? Um, that's, that's something we're working on that I've brought up to them. That it's been, actually, we received one, and there's a lot of questions on it, which we're working out. <laughs> and one of the things is also we need them in a, a monthly basis. Yeah. And, uh, you have to go back and... Well, yeah, exactly. So much, and then you don't Rima. even know, you know... That's exactly right. And the other problem what is... What is the question with the bill? Is it... Um, the length on some of the hours spent on any given topic, also on how we're, how we're requesting information and we could maybe just get a yes or no, or uh, this is what we think instead of a longer, more thorough. Do you have a ballpark figure of what the bill was? I don't remember what it was. I Do you remember? It was for the two-month period, of, oh, this is off the top of my head, Michael, October and November. It was. I'm going to say sixty thousand. Was what? No, 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 no. It was like it was. Was it eleven? No, it wasn't eleven. It was like twelve or thirteen. Snow was. Snow was for two months. For two months from December. It was. It was seven and six, I believe. Snow was over six. What's that? Snow was over six. No, they were definitely. It was twenty-one. I don't know off the top of my head. It was. It, it was too much. Right. <laughs> you know, I just talked to him last week. I, <laughs> You're not even on I'm yet. not even on it yet. Right. <laughs> so there were a number of questions. I will, I'll give you once. Yeah, he, I sent him a long email with all the questions on every one of the issues, um, and he's going to reply, and then we will, I will, I'll send you both, both uh, invoices. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, he was uh, willing to work with us immediately on it. <laughs> well, I went to Joe McKay. I didn't go to John. So. And it, it included some suggestions for improvements that would help us as much as for him. So, uh, for example, including the topic on every line item on the invoice. So it might say draft resolution. It would be very helpful to say draft resolution for parking meters. They don't charge us for the time it takes them to do the bill, do they? <laughs> it wasn't listed. <laughs> Anyway, I will get that information to you. It's like uh, it, it's in in the works, and the and, and it will be changed. So, uh, anything else? Did we uh, pass that or vote on that yet? Yeah. Did we vote on that? On the, on the bills. On the bills, yes. Yes. I don't think we did because she had the question. No, we didn't. We All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, approval of minutes, uh, January 26th, 2016. Uh, minutes are for the Board of Trustees meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I was absent. Before we go on to public comment, uh, did we address the letter from Rose Champlin? Oh, no, we did not. 
about um, her driveway. If, yeah, I don't know. They sent pictures. Did Ed, Ed was looking into it. Ed's been given a copy. That's, she's... What's that? She's aged. And, yeah, yeah. 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 I'd like, right to, the street. like to give her some... No, help. absolutely. Uh, public comment? Quiet public. Okay. Um, anything else from the board? Oh, sorry. I uh, wanted to say I was really happy to hear that so many of the local businesses uh, contributed to Appreciation Day. Uh, don't forget to ask us. There's lots of stuff that we're happy to donate. We donate bobs to the senior picnic. In this particular, in this particular event, I mean, we do ask the businesses to donate a lot, and then in this particular event, um, we actually pay for the, for the, for the food, uh, which, which is, and we try to, and this is, I will take um, the blame for this. We try to pick up on the people who've donated previously to give them a little bit that we're going to pay for, and I apologize that we didn't get to you. Oh, no. <laughs> But no thank you, <laughs> thank you. But we will, <laughs> yeah, we won't forget you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anything else? Frank. Frank. I'm sorry. I just had a thought about uh, maybe a suggestion about the, as you're preparing for budget work that, uh, and I don't know if it's time, if there's sufficient time to do this, but uh, it might be helpful if there was some information showing the progressive, you know, the, maybe the last five or ten years of expenditures and perhaps a second. Uh, chart of that that excludes the extraordinary items such as paving or um, sidewalks because it's it's kind of unclear if you just look at the budget for last year maybe uh, that would help maybe everybody kind of get a concept of what the trends are and I suspect that they're up but I don't know what the speed at which those budget trends are going up. I think a, uh, a pie chart for the breakdown of exactly what constitutes our budget would go a long way to, to showing people what their taxpayer Money is going to fund. Because there's a couple big items like police and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Anything else? Make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all.